All right, so in the last video, we took a look at cameras and we mentioned why cameras are important when we come to rendering. Well, in this video, let's talk about rendering. So what exactly is rendering? For those of you that are brand new to 3D and you may have heard the term rendering thrown around, but you might not understand or really fully know what is this rendering that everyone talks about, it's really very simple. It's all about taking the data that we've created so far in our 3D application, our geometry, our materials, and our lighting, and getting that out of our 3D application and into a 2D image in a form that we can either keep that image just as is or we can work with it in a, another application but it's all about getting the data out of our 3D application. It's really all about working out how each pixel of our final image is going to look based on our shaders and our lighting and executing those shaders line by line. Exactly, so if you really want to break it down you can, you can say that the renderer is determining every pixel color in an image. Exactly. And if we have an animation, so a sequence of images, that's all it is. Yeah, it just it's a does whole it bunch of images. for each frame. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, we have the ability to choose which render we want to render with, and we're going to be working with Mantra, the renderer that comes built in with Houdini. It's a fantastic renderer. And um, with that, we shall take a look at how we go about using Mantra to create a render. So we can create a very quick render of the current view. We don't have to worry about creating cameras or lights by firing off a render view with the render view button down here. And we've seen and we've talked about this guy very briefly in a, a how do I, but we'll cover him again here. So if we right click, we can render the view with Mantra. That'll render our current view. Currently is a perspective view. It will throw in the default lighting so that we can see our geometry. We also have the ability to render a flipbook, and we talk about flipbooks in a how do I, so I will not mention them here. So that's rendering our view, but how do we go about creating a proper render, a final render? Well, we can do that by creating a render node. So let's come up to render, create render node, and we're dealing with mantra, so we want a mantra render node. That's going to create the node in our out for basically path within our network and it's created an instance of the Mantra render node. And um, now that we've got this guy, we can render using him, either clicking the render button, or we can come to render, start render, and specify that Mantra render node. And it's uh, important to note that we have the ability to specify a whole load of settings on this node, and they're going to affect our render, and we'll come back to them in a second. But for now, if we were to fire off this render, it's going to throw up an error. And that error is because we now need a camera. So we mentioned in the previous video that it's essential to have a camera for rendering. We can see that here. If we try and get this guy to render, he's thrown up an error asking for um, a camera because the camera we specified doesn't exist. So let's come up and create a camera. Let's create a camera through the current view. And we can do that. We can control click our camera up in the shelf and that will create a camera in the current view. He's come in with the name camera one, which is fantastic because that's the camera our mantra node is looking for. And if we fire off a render now, we're going to render, but we're going to get a warning because Houdini has had to throw in that default lighting again because we haven't created lights in our scene. So it's, it's just warning us that headlight was automatically added. So let's I don't know, throw down a point light, just position that so it's illuminating our scene and something like that. And then we can fire off our render again. And now Mantra is going to be happy. We've got a camera. We've got at least one light in the scene. And it's going to render using the camera and the lighting. So now that we've got our render successfully rendering, we can take a look at some of the render parameters. We're currently set to render any frame. And what that means, it's going to render whatever frame we're currently set to. And I guess the best way to demonstrate this would be to put some animation in place and then we can we can see that. So let's jump over to our object. Let's grab our sphere and I'm going to make a really simple animation. Key on frame one. <laughs> We've still got that option on. Nice. Let's get rid of that keyframe and then on key 48 I'm just going to key this guy up in the air so that we can see if we were to fire off our render on frame one. Then we're going to see the sphere down on the plane, and if we change our frame in a second, we'll see that we are rendering with our currently selected frame. And we should ignore the fact that mPlay decided to explode. It decided to bring up two mPlays for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, but we'll keep going. If we click render now, we're going to render frame 47, and we can see our sphere is up off of the construction plane. 
Now, say we didn't want to render just uh, the current frame, say we wanted to render out that entire animation. Well, we have the ability to do that by specifying to render a frame range. We can specify our start frame of one. Let's say if we were to want to render out a few frames, I'm only going to do a few, so let's say five as our end frame, so we just get a few frames. And this is our increment, so rendering here, we we're going to render frame one, then plus one, that's two, plus one is three. If we were to set our increment to two, we'd render frame one, frame three, and then frame five. So we can see that we've got our camera specified. If we were to have multiple cameras, you could bring up this pop-up and specify multiple cameras. And uh, I guess with that, let's demonstrate rendering the range before we can continue and talk about some of the other parameters. So it's going to render our five frames, and it's going to render those into Mantra. In the Mplay. <laughs> into Mplay, thank <laughs> you. That's me thinking Mplay, but reading Mantra up here on the output and... Just confused my mind for a second. So yeah, it's going to render those into mplay, so they're being stored in your computer's memory. But we now do have the ability to scrub those five frames. And very slight motion on the sphere there. So I'm going to set this back to, excuse me, set this back to render any frame, just so we're rendering one frame, because rendering a sequence for now is uh, not going to affect some of the other parameters we talk about. So if we jump to the Properties tab, and uh, we have the ability to override the camera resolution. We talked in the camera video about how a camera has a resolution. That's what's used when we come to render. If we wish to override that, we can specify a new resolution. Let's specify, I don't know, 320 by 240. So it's less resolution than we had earlier. And we should see a definite difference when we come to render. We're going to have a much smaller image. There we go. Now our image is being rendered by 320 by 240, even though over on our camera, our camera's resolution is still set to 640 by 480. Fantastic. So with that, let's take a look at not rendering into mplay, but rendering to disk. And to do that, we need to specify an output picture. We could bring up a browser if we wanted. I'm just going to use $hip to save to wherever the current file is going to be saved to. And then you can specify a file name. So my file dot from there we really want to be able to well we're not saving a range so for now let's just specify a, a file extension i'm going to use the houdini file format of dot pick it's going to infer from the file name how we're basically saving that image it's going to look at this extension and know from that extension what file format it's using and, and work out how to save your image in that format if you were to want to specify a specific format you can do that as well and with that Let's render. It's possibly going to complain about saving the image because this file's not actually saved, but we'll see. And indeed it did. So I'm going to bring up this pop-up, and I'm actually going to specify C, Documents and Settings, My File. So this way we're not relying on this hip file actually having been saved. There we go. So that's now rendered to disk. And if we were to come to... C documents and settings administrator, we could see my file dot pick nc. We could come up to render and play load disk files. We can load this image back in. So C documents and settings, my file dot picnic load. And there we go, there's our frame that we've saved out. Now let's say we were rendering out a range. Let's say we were rendering our frames one through five. We obviously don't want to leave this as it is currently because we'll render out frame one and we'll save it as my file dot pick. Then we'll render out frame 2 and we'll save it over the top as myfile.pick. And the same for 3, 4. So at the end, we'd only actually have frame 5 as the output. So we really want to include our frame number in our file. And we can do that using the $f uh, variable. And $f is going to represent our current frame number. And it's going to change on every frame such that when we come through and we render frame 1, we'll get myfile. This will evaluate to 1. Dot pick. When we get frame 2, we evaluate to 2 and so on. Now, when we're dealing with more than just frames 1 through 5, when we get to say frame 10 or frame 100, we're going to be dealing with numbers that have padding. And it's important to pad out your frame numbers with zeros so that frame 1 becomes 0, 0, 001 so that when we get to frame 100, we don't have frame 1, frame 100, we're going to have frame 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 002, up to like 0, 099, so the digits 100. Match. Exactly. And that's very easy in Houdini. We simply add an integer 
value after our dollar f, and that's the number of digits we wish to have in our frame number. So if we do three, mm -hmm. that's going to pad our dollar f out to three. In this case, we'll render my file dot zero zero one dot pic dot zero zero two dot pic up to dot zero zero five okay. dot pic. If we now click render. It's going to bring up this pop-up and render out, and it's also going to give us a status down here to do, you know, the progress of our render, what frame it's currently rendering, and the likes. If we jump down to our folder, we can now see those five files. If we bring up mplay, we can now load those files in as a sequence, and we load those in. So now we've got those five files rendered to disk. So the, the fact that it shows that as a sequence, you might want to point that again. That's very yeah, nice. Yeah, very cool. Um, so we've got my file dot, and it's realized that we've got three numbers in our frame padding, so it's actually put in the dollar F3 because it's showing sequences as one entry. As soon as we uncheck that, we can see we actually do have five separate files. Check show sequences as one entry. We can now grab that as a sequence, which means it's going to load in all those frames into the correct frame slot and allow us to preview that animation back. So the final thing I'd, I'd really like to talk about is you do have the ability to fire off a render with different settings to our current settings. You can click on what was normally, say, on a object or a top level, our display flag. At output level, it's our render flag. And that will bring up um, our overrides, which allow us to override a different uh, frame range. By default, it will come in saying use node range settings. We can say render our current frame. So instead of rendering frames 1 through 5, it will render frame 47. And we can say, instead of rendering at whatever resolution we got it set to, we could render at half resolution or quarter resolution. And we can change various other settings as well. If we fire off a render, that should have rendered frame 47. Indeed it did. And we can load that in. So let's load in frame 47. And this is now really essential to uncheck show sequences as one entry because I just want that yeah. single frame. And we've got our frame in there being rendered instead of being um, rendered from our camera's resolution. It got overridden to half and is now rendered at 320 by 240. Mm -hmm. So with that, that's everything I wanted to, to cover. I don't know if okay. there's anything you want Again, to mention. Again, no, it's just a, a quick introduction to working with render nodes. We will be spending a great deal more time in the second Technical Director yes. uh, DVD that we will be releasing. So this should get you guys up and going, though. And with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot.